Welcome back to Anna Reads. If you'll notice, Figaro Disney bound today from Walt Disney's Pinocchio. Got this little guy in the parks when I was probably eight. So let's get right into Walt Disney and American Original by Bob Thomas. Where were we? All right. Unit one, the Midwest years, 1901 to 1923. We have Luther over here, he's helpful. Oh, I still can't do French. isigny sur mer is a small windswept village on the Normandy coast, a few kilometers from the beaches where Allied troops landed on June 6, 1944. Nine centuries before, French soldiers sailed from the same coast to invade England. Among them were Hughes Disney and his son Robert. The family remained in England, their name becoming anglicized to Disney. During the Restoration, a branch of the Disney clan moved to Ireland, settling in County Kilkenny. Arundel Elias Disney was born there in 1801 and in 1834, he and his brother Robert sailed from Liverpool with their families to begin new lives in America. After a month's voyage, they arrived in New York on October 3rd. The brothers parted, Robert heading for a farm in the Midwest, Elias traveling to the Canadian frontier in Godric Township, Ontario. Would you come here? There. Boop. The first white men had settled there only nine years before. Other immigrants, Scottish, Pennsylvania German, Irish, <laughs> Scottish, Pennsylvania German, Irish, were attracted to the land by promises of roads and improvements and prices of seven shillings and sixpence per acre. But the land company failed to keep its promises and the settlers found they had brought their families to a wilderness without roads, mills, schools, or churches. Elias Disney saw hope in the vast acreage with its rushing trout-filled streams, forests alive with deer and elk, meadows abounding with wild plums and berries. He built a mill beside the Maitland River and prospered by grinding wheat and sawing timber for his neighbors. His wife Maria gave him 16 children, the eldest being Keppel Disney, born in Ireland in 1832. The Disney mill thrived for many years, then bad times descended on Godric. Elias was forced to default on his mortgages. Son Keppel married an Irish-born immigrant, Mary Richardson, and they settled in the nearby Bluevale district. Keppel was a strapping, black-bearded man who tried a variety of enterprises, from drilling for oil to opening to operating a salt well. He disliked the Canadian winters, and in 1878, he took off for the California gold fields with his oldest sons, Elias and Robert. Passing through Kansas, Keppel Disney was convinced by a railroad agent to buy 200 acres of Union Pacific land near Ellis. He sent for the rest of his family to join him on their new farm. Because he couldn't afford lumber, he built them a house made of sod. The farm began to thrive on cattle and wheat, but Keppel still resisted the high prices the railroad charged for lumber. He quarried rock and built a house of stone. Elias Disney, eldest of Keppel's 11 children, became restless on the farm and left for a job as a machinist in a railroad shop, where a co-worker was Walter Chrysler, founder of the automotive empire. Elias moved on to join the work crew pushing the Union Pacific Line through Colorado. When the railroad reached Denver, his job as apprentice carpenter was over. Jobs were scarce in Denver, and Elias tried to earn a living by playing his fiddle with two other amateur musicians outside saloons. 
The returns were skimpy, and Elias returned to the family farm in Ellis. Part of the reason for Elias's return to Kansas was Flora Call, the pretty daughter of the Disney's neighbors, the Charles Calls. The Call family was Scottish and English, the first to emigrate, Thomas Call, arrived in Boston in 1636. A descendant, Eber Call, moved to Ohio in 1825, and his son, Car Charles, left Oberlin College to join the 1849 gold rush to California. He found no gold and returned to Ohio, later settling his wife, eight daughters, and two sons in Ellis, Kansas, where he taught school. The prairie blizzards convinced Charles Call to move his family to Florida in 1884. Keppel Disney also grew weary of the Kansas winters, and he is, and his son Elias accompanied their neighbors to Florida. Keppel decided against making the move permanent and returned to his Kansas farm. Elias remained in Florida. He bought a 40-acre farm at Kismet and continued his courtship of Flora Call, who had become a grammar school teacher. They were married on New Year's Day, 1888, in her parents' home in Akron, Florida. Elias was 28, his bride was 19. Photographs of Elias and Flora Disney provide hints of their natures. He, was, he with starched collar and heavy woolen ready-made suit big-eared with a hawk nose, alert eyes and a stern face. She in a high-necked dress, deep-set eyes, heavy-lidded, wide mouth pursed but with a hint of humor. They were a devoted couple and she remained patient and understanding through his many misadventures in business. First, Elias sold his farm and bought a hotel in Daytona Beach but the tourist trade slumped and he was forced out of business. Now he had a son, Herbert, born December 8th, 1888, and Elias went to work as a rural mailman and managed to buy a small orange grove. Then a war swept the country. Overwhelmed with patriotism, he enlisted in the militia. The crisis soon dissolved and Elias saw no sense in remaining in the militia, not when he had a wife and baby son and an orange grove to care for. So he walked out of the army camp and went home. Military police arrived at his house to arrest him as a deserter. I didn't desert, there isn't any war, he reasoned. The army men could find no answer to his logic. At least you must give back the uniform, one insisted. No, sir. I didn't get paid, so I'm going to keep the uniform, Elias replied. A frost destroyed the orange crop and Elias was stricken with malaria. He decided, as he often did when his luck turned sour, that his life would improve if he moved on. He chose Chicago. Seventy years before, Chicago had been a collection of huts on the shore of Lake Michigan. By 1889, when Elias and Flora Disney arrived with their infant son, it was a brawny city of 1,200,000 citizens, the railroad hub sending wheat and beef to the east and cloth and threshers to the west. After a lifetime in small towns, Elias Disney was bewildered by the city's clamor, but he was determined to succeed after his failure in Florida. First, he needed shelter for his young family. Are you trying to hide? All I'm getting is his butt over here, so. Figaro here's gonna provide the cuteness, isn't he? He decided to build his own house, applying the carpentry, carpentry he had learned on the Union Pacific. Flora said she would design it for him. There's nothing mysterious about drawing up plans for a house, she argued, and a woman ought to know more about making it livable. Following her plans, he built a square, trim, neat little house at 1249 Tripp Avenue, one of the two paved roads in the northwestern part of Chicago. Elias painted the house white with blue trim and visitors admired its clean lines and economy. 
he bought the adjoining lot and constructed another house, which he offered for sale. He began building homes in other parts of Chicago, and he developed relationships with bankers who provided loans for prospective buyers. Flora drew up the plans, bought the building materials, did the bookkeeping, and even furnished the new house if the buyer so desired. In 1893, when building was in a slump, Elias took a job as a carpenter for the World's Columbian Exposition, working seven days a week at a dollar a day. The family was growing. Raymond Arnold Disney was born on December 30th, 1890, and Roy Oliver Disney on June 24th, 1893. Elias and his wife and sons worshipped at St. Paul Congregational Church, and he became a close friend of the preacher, Walter Parr. Elias volunteered to build a new church for the congregation, and he put up a plain, serviceable structure with a tall, sloping roof. Flora played the, or played the organ in the new church, and Elias preached the sermon when the preacher was on vacation. When both their wives became pregnant in 1901, Elias made a proposal to the preacher. If I get a baby boy, I'll name him after you. If your baby is a boy, you name him after me. Walter Parr agreed. A fourth son was born to Elias and Flora Disney in the upper bedroom of the Trip Avenue house on Sunday, December 5th, 1901. Keeping his bargain with the preacher, Elias named the boy Walter Elias Disney. The Parr baby was also a boy, and he was named Elias. It had been eight and a half years since her last son had been born, and Flora Disney lavished attention on young Walter. He was a sweet-natured baby, handsomer than the other boys, who had their father's strong Roman nose. The mother liked to dress Walter in frilly clothes. Roy uncomplainingly pushed his little brother in a baby carriage up and down Trip Avenue and even bought Walter toys out of his own earnings, a gesture which might be considered prophetic. Two years and a day after Walter's arrival, the first daughter was born to the Disneys and she was named Ruth Flora. By this time, Elias had grown concerned about rearing his children in the big city. The neighborhood was filling up with Poles and Irish and Swedes, most of them hardworking, God-fearing people. But the old world family ties were unraveling and some of the children ran wild while the parents scraped for a living. I see the number G Officer Krupke in West Side Story for um, comparable reference if not a comparable time. Not far away from the Disney neighborhood was Cicero, later the headquarters of Al Capone and other notorious criminals. Elias Disney's concern grew each time he passed the street corner with its three saloons. His mind was made up when two neighborhood boys were arrested for killing a policeman in a car barn robbery. One was sentenced to Joliet prison for 20 years, the other to life imprisonment. Flora, those two boys are no older than Herb and Ray, Elias said to his wife. We've got to get out of this cesspool of a city. Flora agreed with her husband's proposal to move the family to the rural atmosphere they had known in their early lives. Elias visited communities in Colorado and Alabama where he had heard of opportunities but none seemed suitable. Then he went to Marceline, Missouri, where his brother Robert owned property. The country was fertile with green rolling hills, a pleasant little town where supplies could be bought and enough industry, there were coal mines and oil wells for, for economic stability. Marceline, Elias Disney decided, would be the place where he could earn a good living and rear his five children in a wholesome Christian atmosphere. And tomorrow we will start on chapter two of the Midwest years. This has been Anna Reed's and this has been Bob Thomas's Walt Disney and American Original.
This book is so special to me. I've read it twice, including while dressed as Belle at Dragon Con, and yes, I was cruising around reading it, book in front of face, and just sort of navigating my way blindly through crowds. I'm surprised no one burst into song. Things are still pretty tough right now, I'm not gonna lie. We've still got what they're saying is two weeks of shutdown. I'll believe that when I see it. And I just, I wanna give you a little bit of sentiment from Pinocchio and I hope it doesn't get me slapped with a CND. Faith is kind. She brings to those who love the sweet fulfillment of their secret longing. That's from when you wish upon a star. And I really, really hope y'all take that to heart because right now, I, I don't know what else we have to hold on to. Wish, hope, dream, watch Disney Plus, do what you have to do. Just care for yourself, care for your friends and families, practice social distancing, cuddle a plush cat, or bother a real cat. This is Luther and I'm going to be bothering him all through the self-containment, right? Right. Mm. Yeah, you get kisses for getting me all covered in pollen. Yes, you do. So like I close every video, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, hit the subscribe button. And if there's something you're interested in hearing me read, feel free to contact me on Instagram at serenity underscore sweet 13 on Twitter at serenity sweet 13 no underscore. Oh, look, you can tell he's got eyes. If you found my YouTube channel through Facebook, feel free to contact me on Facebook or anytime direct message or comment right here on YouTube. Okay, I really want to do this, but I'm not going to sing the whole song so I don't get hit with anything. Am I see? See you real soon. K-E-Y. Why? Because we like you.